Hello boys and girls, it's Mrs. Seda, and I'm back to read you some more Apple Blossom the Possum by Holly Goldberg Sloan. Before we do though, I wanna show you, we had a near disaster with Apple Blossom today. I was working in my office and I looked back and Evie was checking out Apple Blossom. I actually had to, she kind of knocked her right off of her perch and I had to rescue her. I thought that was kind of funny, especially since we know at the end of the last chapter, chapter 14, that Apple Blossom had a tumble and we're not really sure exactly where she's gonna end up, but I have a feeling that that dog that loves the red ball is probably gonna come into play. So it's interesting that my poor friend Apple Blossom had a rough day with a puppy dog today and it's possible that that's what's going to happen with Apple Blossom. So let's go ahead and get started with chapter 15 um, and we'll see what happened. Chapter 15, Apple Blossom opened her eyes. She is alive, but in a daze. Where is she? She tries hard to make the world stop spinning as she realizes she's inside the monster house. The little possum's whole body freezes. What will become of her? Will the large people attack? Will the dog rip her into pieces? Anything is possible. She waits for the assault to begin, but nothing happens. And then she realizes that the monsters are still asleep. Her tumble down the brick shaft into their, la into their lair has not disturbed the creatures. Apple Blossom's body is sore from the fall, but nothing is broken. She lifts her arms and tries to climb the sooty brick walls, but there's nothing to grip. No amount of effort will get her up the smooth sides. Apple Blossom turns back to look inside the monster's house. She can see all kinds of objects in the shadowy spaces, soft looking nests where the people sit when they stare at the big magic light box. It is now also asleep. She is afraid of that box and she wants to stay as far away as possible. And then she hears something. It is coming from above. Apple Blossom, are you down there? It's Antonio and Amlet. They are up on the roof shouting down to her. Apple Blossom wants to answer, but she's afraid that if she makes noise, she will wake the people. Or worse, the dog. Who knows what would happen then? She closes her eyes and forces herself not to panic. Isn't that what Mama Possum has said? Don't panic when you have stage fright. Well, where is Mama now? What would Mama Possum do in this situation? How should she act? They never rehearse being trapped in a monster house. She decided to act brave and confident, trying out a line Apple Blossom whispers. If there is a way in, then there is a way out. She's not sure she means it, but she says it a second time anyway, but with more feeling. And then she starts to move. She stays along the edge of the walls. It doesn't take long before she works her way around the largest space in the house. She finds no way out. Up ahead in another area, she can see that this is where the people keep their food. They store more things than squirrels. It is possible that the light boxes are telling the monsters to be hoarders. It certainly looks that way. High above on ledges, she sees cartons that have no, that her nose tells her contain edible things. She spots apples in a bowl and they are not rotten. She sees bananas and they are yellow and full, not brown with empty skins. She smells coffee and chocolate and bread and crackers and nuts. And then her nose twitches as it detects something more overpowering than the smell of cinnamon and pepper and olive oil. She smells a dog. And then she sees him, but he's in a trap. There is a huge cage in the corner of this hoarding area. It is square with a metal front. And inside is the beast known as Columbo. His eyes are shut. He is asleep. It is a miracle. And then the worst possible thing happens. The monster's snout starts moving up and down. Something bad is about to happen. Apple Blossom can feel it. And the dog confirms her suspicions when he opens his eyes and stares right at her. Apple Blossom takes off running. 
in the trap, the dog gets to his feet and he barks as loud as anything the possum has ever heard. The noise is angry and so frightening, but then a light goes on in another part of the house and Apple Blossom hears the sound of the people moving. And, ha and somehow that is even scarier than the villainous dog. That was chapter 15. Let's go right into chapter 16. This is really exciting. Up on the roof, Antonio and Amlet are frantic. Something is going on in the house below. Little Apple Blossom must have survived the fall because there's a lot of commotion now. They hear the dog barking and part of the roof has lit up. The possum runs. The possums run to a smooth square where there is glass instead of tile. I'm thinking that must be like a sunroof. Um, so like a window that looks down in. They stare down through the window on the roof. They can see people walk by right underneath them. And they can also see Apple Blossom. She's running. She turns the corner and disappears from view. A shiver goes up in Amlet's spine. What have we done? Antonio shuts his eyes and does his best to concentrate. When he opens them, he is set on a plan. We can't stay here. So is it every possum for himself, Amlet shouts. Antonio starts, starts to the drain pipe. We'll come back when we have more to offer than our own limited knowledge of this situation. Amlet's head bobs up and down in agreement. And until then, we just hope that our little sister survives. Apple Blossom's timing is perfect. Perfect. She turns the corner just before a large monster emerges. A second earlier and she would have certainly been seen. The people looks in both directions and then heads towards the barking dog. What's going on? The people says, what's wrong with you, Columbo? One thing is very obvious. The dog named Columbo wants out <coughs> Excuse me, of his trap. He is desperate to show what is wrong. His cage rattles and sways from the motion of his body. Apple Blossom hears the commotion and the communication between the monster is not good. Monsters is not good. The people's voice is harsh. Calm down, you're waking up the whole house. The dog stops moving. Only his tail trembles as he tries not to tries to control himself. The people looks down the hallway and then says, okay, all right, I'll make sure everything's okay. And with that, the monster turns in the direction of Apple Blossom. Apple Blossom, for a moment, just an instant, thinks she should act dead. But then she gathers her wits and decides that if she pretends to die, given the circumstances, she might end up actually dead. Any performance right now might be her curtain call. And so she keeps moving. She turns left, she turns right, she spins around. She stays low to the ground, head tucked down. She tries to remember acting exercises, but not the dying part. Act brave, act the part of an animal that knows how to escape danger. And then she turns another corner and she's in a new area. She is in the place where the smallest people live, lives. Up ahead, she sees a nest with the littlest monster inside. Next to the nest is a pile of furry animals. Their eyes are open wide, but they don't move. She knows right away they're not real animals. They have no smell. They're fake. They're stuffed cloth. The monster coming after her is getting closer. And so Apple Blossom dives into the pile of fake furry animals just before a beam of light sweeps into the room. Apple Blossom does not move. She does not breathe. She stares straight ahead and she waits. She acts like a stuffed animal. The monster without fur, I'm sorry, the monster without much fur on his head stands in the doorway. He holds a light in his hand. This is what makes the shining beam, this hot white light spins around the room and then it happens. The light sweeps right over Apple Blossom's face. She remembers Mama saying that an actor has to burn inside with outer ease. A famous possum named Chekhov said this, Apple Blossom fixes her face in a smile. She acts fake, she acts frozen, she acts not afraid. She thinks this might be her best acting ever. 
the monster without much fur on his head stands in front of the second monster who has appeared. The second monster whispers something. Apple Blossom cannot hear. And then both people turn and move back down the passageway. Apple Blossom hears the monster open the door to the house. Then she hears the monster say, aha. Moments later, the house door can be heard closing. Apple Blossom hears the biggest monster say, Good boy, Columbo, you heard possums up on the roof. That's what it was, right, boy? I saw them just now. There is something about the tone of the monster's voice that makes the dog get all wiggly. Apple Blossom can hear his tail thrashing against his cage. The monster continues speaking. Well, you get a treat for that. I saw two of the nasty critters. The word treat makes the beast go crazy. The word nasty makes Apple Blossom's heart sink. Apple Blossom can hear the monsters, oh, monster opening something in the hoarding area. And then the dog known as Columbo snaps his jaws. She can make out the beast chewing. And then the people issues a command. Go back to sleep, command Columbo. We'll call an exterminator tomorrow. The word exterminator hangs in the air. What's an exterminator? Apple Blossom thinks it through. The monster has seen Antonio and Amlet, but they must be safe because he came right back inside. Besides, his teeth are no good for attacking. She has seen the teeth of the people. They are, are not pointy. They are flat and square and not the teeth for doing anything productive. The teeth, like their absence of a tail, is another thing that makes must make people so unhappy. In the distance, she hears the dog named Columbo smack his lips and make a whining sound. He wants more treat. The treat seems to be all that he's thinking about now. She can tell that he has forgotten she is in the house because he hears she hears the bee settle back down into his cage. He is going back to sleep. Apple Blossom breathes in and breathes out and congratulates herself. She wishes she could tell her brothers and her sisters and most of all Mama Possum how she just made it past a dog and people. Her heart is pounding so hard that she can feel it in her toes, but she is suddenly more tired than she can remember ever being. There is no choice in the matter. She has to fall asleep. But should she hide? Apple Blossom unties a hat that is on some kind of large pretend people and places it on her own head. Maybe it will make her look as if she belongs. She is surprised by how comfortable the hat is. There's a fake bear wearing a blue garment and she pulls it off and slips it on. Her own arms fit right through the sleeves and she is able to close all the buttons but one. She sees that another of these fake furry creatures has black covers on its feet. She grabs one and pulls and the funny object comes right off. It doesn't take long before she has her own toes inside, bo inside both the foot covers. Her transformation is now complete. She snuggles into the pile of stuffed animals and exhaustion takes over. Moments later, she is sound asleep. Oh my goodness. So she's hiding in the littlest people's room in her stuffed animals. I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. Do you think Amlet and Antonio are going to come back for her and try to rescue her? And then there's the exterminators going to be coming. Oh my goodness. Okay. So tomorrow we'll get to chapter 17. It was fun reading with you. Have a good night. Bye. Apple Blossom saying goodbye.